last major liming we did would be, uh, that was in the old ADP we, scheme, we did that and what a tremendous benefit we got from it. The bone in the cattle and the lambs was phenomenally different from what we've got now. I will do the odd time when I can afford it. Uh, we we'll sometimes will put prilled lime on, uh, it's a relatively short fix, it helps the clover grow, uh, it makes us grow better grass, locks up more carbon, you name it, it just does the, the stock good, does the ground good, does the environment good, everything. It ticks all the boxes. For me, liming is fundamental if you're grazing animals. Um, because you obviously get better quality grass. It also produces much healthier grazing ground for, for livestock as well. Um, so it's a combination of the two. You get a higher health status and you get better grazing. So at the moment I'm putting some on nearly every year. We're having a big splurge this year on topping up all the fields in this wee valley here. Quite often I hear farmers and particularly the sheep farmers and beef farmers in marginal areas where they haven't limed say, oh, I'm short of micronutrients. Yes, you probably are because they're locked in the soil. And if you can get your soil working better, liming, keeping on top of the liming, you know, you're going to get a better nutrient release, you're going to get healthier livestock. It depends on the quality of the lime you're using. So if you're using poor quality lime, it's going to take longer because the important thing is, is the fine particles in a, a sample of lime. Because if you've got big lumps, that test at the lab will still say it has an MV of 54, but it's not necessarily doing you any good because it, it has to be the fineness of the particles in the lime which makes a difference when you're lifting pH. We get it from Fort William because it's the only really local commercial lime quarry. We get what we get really from Fort William, which is a, a mixture. Um, it maybe could be better, but at the price that we're paying delivered, which is £27.50 delivered, um, I don't think we can argue too much at that. That's a lot of the problem with lime purchases, is that it's bought on price, not on quality. I know some people are limited into the supply of the material that they can get, but ultimately it's quality that will pay dividends. The problems in this area is relatively few suppliers of lime, basically Fort Williams are closest. Uh, transport is the big thing, that's what really puts the money onto it. And equipment, and paying for it, money. This is a very old system, land drive system, where um, it's an old second-hand Massey Ferguson tractor with land drive gearing and a land drive spreader. It means it can go in difficult places because the trailer's helping to push the tractor, even when it's got four or five tonne of lime on, on the back. So it's a good kit. For the prolled lime, I just use the fertiliser barrel. Uh, for ground limestone, I'll uh, pinch my neighbour's spreader, Mr Gully, uh, when he's not looking. Really they need to be looking at analysis um, because you know it can depend on how much you need to put on the soil. Where is your pH? You know, is it a pH of 5.2? Is it a pH of 5.8? Uh, where are you trying to target the pH as well? Are you trying to target 6 or are you trying to target 6.5? What are the, what's the situation you're looking? Targeting six, okay, has been um, the, the norm, but maybe in certain situations it needs to be a little bit higher because it releases more nutrient. In the days when we used to sample regularly, which is a great thing to do, it's a bit frightening the first time, and then you find out you need a terrible amount of tonnage of lime, but uh, it, you see the progress coming up the hill, you know, as the PAH comes up, uh, it gets better and you see more grass growing, stronger grass, earlier grass, 